Hi there, Marty here, recreational poker player by night and part-time poker vlogger by day, making my way over to Steubenville, Ohio to the Viking Social Club. It's one of many privately owned poker clubs across Ohio and only about 45 minutes west of Pittsburgh. Oh, here we are at the Viking Social Club in downtown Steubenville, Ohio. It's here for the Friday night $80 buy-in, so come on down and we'll see you here. We get a bit of a late start as some of the players are in the 1-3 cash game. They want to play through to their button, so once the cards get in the air, I end up finding a fold fest for a bit until we take a look at this hand. I'm in middle position, both the early position player and I call, when the hijack player decides to raise to 1800. And since it's so early in the match, we both decide to come along. Both lines fold. We now go three ways to a flop of 7-6 deuce rainbow, and even though I flopped middle pair, it's still about as exciting as watching paint dry. So we're off to a turn, which brings a little bit more excitement to me. It's the three of hearts. Now I have a flush draw to go along with my middle pair. Both my competitors, well, they don't seem to have much. So this time I lead out for 2100, and as expected, they both fold. Easy game. Blinds are now at 300-500, still no ante. I'm in the small blind and I look down at 8-9 of diamonds. Everyone except the button limps in, so the big blind decides to punish the table and raise the price of poker to 2500 Kelly, a reg at the club, he calls as does the hijack, lowjack, and the cutoff, so with all this action, I figure to be priced in and call as well. Wow! We go six ways to a flop, a uh, family flop of Jack 4 3, couple of clubs. I check, and then we find that our original Razor, he decides to lead out for 12,500 this time. Kelly, our reg, he scans the table and decides to make the call, which prompts snap folds from the rest of us. So our big blind got what he wanted. He's now heads up to the turn, which comes the Three of Diamonds. That's when our big blind decides to shove his remaining stack of 31,100 into the middle, and that puts Kelly deep into the blender. He tries to decide whether or not his flush draw will come home. I assume that's what he has based on his commentary. So he ultimately makes the call with his 7-5 of clubs, to which our big blind turns over the ace of spades and jack of hearts. He's got top top, but no club blockers. That's when the river is delivered, it's the three of hearts, and our big blind, he gets to double through Kelly, and no clubs for you. Blinds remain the same, and for this hand, I'm under the gun looking down at a couple of cards that's way at the top of my range. It's the ace king of clubs. So I decide a raise to 1500 is in order. Folds go all around to the cutoff. He makes the call, as does the small blind, big blind folds. We're now three ways to the flop of 5-4 jack, couple of diamonds. We all check to the turn, it's the ace of spades. And since no one has made a move to this point, I'm hoping that the flush draw is off the table, so I lead out for 5k with top pair and a decent kicker. I get both of these fellas to call. What on earth are they playing? No one has attempted to bet yet, so I don't think anyone has some weird draw like 6-7 of diamonds. It might be some sort of raggedy ace like ace-deuce, ace-three, any ace with a low card might be possible. It's hard to tell at this point, so I guess we'll just have to take a river and see what happens next. Well, it's pretty much a scare card for the table. It's the two of diamonds. We all check, and the small blind then announces he wins with his river flush. I guess we have tonight's river rat. For this next hand, I'm on the button with 8-5 of spades. Both the hijack and lowjack call, so I decide to gamble it up a bit and flat. Small blind completes, big blind checks, and we go five ways to a flop of queen six deuce, couple of spades. Digging these flush draws tonight. I only hope this time it comes through for me. Both blinds decide to check. That's when the low jack leads out for 1300. And with this bet in position, I'm putting him on some sort of queen X hand with at least a spade for his blocker kicker. So if I decide to call here, I know that I'll only have a little bit more than a pot sized bet left behind. Everyone else folds and we go heads up to a beautiful four of spades. The hijack player now leads out for 3,000, so I waste little time shoving my remaining 15K into the middle, and I'm promptly met with a snap call. And when the hands are tabled, I see that our villain was betting his pocket aces, only to be taken down by a crummy suited sort of connectors. You can say nice hand asshole if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you better run.
You got two blinds, so I gotta say, you better run. Blinds are now at $300-$600. With a $300 ante, I've got the button with Ace-5 offsuit. Our early position player, he limps in for $600, so I make the okie dokie call. Small blind completes, big blind checks his option, and we go four ways to the flop of Ace-Queen-6 couple of hearts. You know, these Ace rags are pretty strong when you're playing eight-handed poker. So they all check over to me. I decide to lead out for 2K, both blinds call, and the early position player, well, he folds, probably because he shouldn't have been in the hand in the first place. We've got three of the best headed to the turn. It's the Ace of Diamonds. Can you believe it? I've got the essential net so far, but the board is double paired, so when both players check it over to me, I decide to get a bit trappy here and checks as well. Gosh, I hope this doesn't blow up in my face. We're off to see a river. It's the wonderful two of spades. <laughs> Sorry about that. This time, the big blind decides to lead out for 2,500. I'm not mad about that because it allowed me to snap call with my top set and take down the pot. Easy game. A couple of hands later, I'm under the gun with another ASEX hand. This time, it's suited in diamonds. So I decide to bring in for a raise to 2,600. Holds go around to the button who shoves his remaining tiny little stack in for uh, essentially 100 bucks more. And since this is a tournament and the object is to collect all the chips, the big blind decided to toss in the additional 2K as well. Of course, I came in too. We go three ways to a flop with one all in. It's three eight deuce, couple of diamonds, pretty good flop for my hand. But we go check, check to the turn. It's the four of clubs, again we check, and the river, we find a jack of spades. So when the hands are tabled, we see that the big blind gets to win this time. He's holding on to ace eight off suit. And the button, well, he shoved his tiny little stack with ace queen of hearts and could not improve. You know, there has to be some sort of strategy to be played when the best hands you get all night in these lower limit tournaments is ace-five offsuit. Because as you see here, I'm in early position holding on to it once again. This is like maybe the fifth, sixth, seventh time I've played it tonight. Hmm. Well, my strategy for him here is to raise to 3200 and I get one, two, three, four callers <laughs> practically the entire table. We go five ways to a flop of ace-five deuce rainbow. Wow. I just managed to secure top two on this board, and I'm going to check to see what the other fellas will do. You, you think I should bet my own hand? Hmm. I'm all in. We all check to the turn. It's the nine of spades, so this time I shove all in. See there? I do know how to bet my hands, because everybody folded. Easy game. And on the very next hand, I'm looking down at Queen-7 offsuit. It's the computer hand. Well, not really sure why it's called that. Maybe someone out there does. Can you let us in on the gag? The low jack and high jack both limp in, as do I. Small blind completes, big blind checks his option, and we go, once again, five ways to a flop. It's 7-8 Queen Rainbow. What are you looking at? Oh, my lucky stars! Again, I flop two pair. What's the odds of that? So when the fellas check over to me, I come on in for 1600. Both blinds fold along with the low jack, but not the high jack. Oh, no, 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 no. Cause he gave me the stank eye already, thinking I'm up to no good. And you know, most days <laughs> he's probably right. Apparently he likes what he sees out there. He calls and we go heads up to a turn and it comes out the nine of hearts. The hijack checks over to me, so this time I bet 3K. And he calls. Then the dealer puts out the river. It's the ace of spades. And her villain makes a check again, and I'll tell you right now, there's no way and you know where that I'm about to bet. So I announce my two pair, then he reveals he had flopped top pair with his naked queen. So we scoop another one. Easy game. So buckle up now because it took this entire game, but I finally found a premium hand. That's right, I got pocket kings. I'm in the cutoff position, and since we have an early position limper, I decide to bump up the price of poker to 6K. The cutoff, who's our table captain and tournament chip leader, he calls in position, as does the big blind, and the under-the-gun player makes the okie-dokie call. So with all this action, I'm praying to the poker goddesses, no ace, no ace, no ace, no ace, no ace. We go four ways to the flop of 2-4 Queen Rainbow. 
The small blind, he decides to torch some money, so he leads out for 2K. The under the gun rechecks his cards, then wisely makes the fold. That's when I raise up to 13K. Our chip leader gets out of the way, but the big blind, well, he gets sticky and he makes the call. The turn comes another queen, which prompts the big blind to go all in. And because this is the best hand I've seen all night, and because I'd watched our villain bluff earlier, I make the dumbest decision ever and stupidly make the call for my tournament life. I'm muttering out loud, well, if you got a queen, you got me. Which he does, so it's off to play in the cash game to see if we can bring home that high hand. I hear there's a $500 bonus in there. We'll see. And moving over to the cash game really wasn't that much different for me. I had a lot of folding hands until I found this one in the big blind. And like most 1-3 games, we find pretty much the entire table calling. Under the gun plus one, the cutoff button, and small blind, they all limp in. So when it comes back to me, I decide to raise the price of poker to 30 bucks. Only the button calls. We go heads up to a flop of 9-8 deuce couple of clubs. I lead out for 50 as a semi bluff, and since I hadn't really played any hands till now, the button decided I must be at the top of my range and decided to fold. I love it. A few more rounds go by without any playable hands until I look down at pocket nines in middle position. Now with the under the gun straddle on for six, I decide to raise here to $18 to signal to the entire table the strength of my middle pair. Well, this did little to deter the folks of the felt. Both the low jack and high jack call along with both blinds and we're right back to the straddler. He decides there's way too much continuation limping going on with my puny raise and he must have decided there was enough money in the middle so he three bets to 100. A little bet of 100. Now he could be doing this with a wide range of hands, pretty much everything highlighted here on this chart, but from where I sit and how I've seen him play so far, my instincts are telling me that this bet is rooted in shenanigans. And now that my all-in decision was made, bolts go around to the table and we're right back on our villain who goes deep into the tank. Which gives me a bit of comfort because if he truly was at the top of his range, he most likely would have snap called. And what's more, he coyly looked over to me and asked if we could run it twice, or at the very least, he wanted to be on the vlog. So what do we do here? Do we run it twice, lowering variance and giving our villain additional outs, or do we prefer to hit that max pain and only run it once? Still, there is a third option. I could offer to give him half his stack back if he folds, which would allow me to scoop in a decent pot and give our villain the chance to keep his stack intact. Let me know what you might have done in the comments section down below. And while you're there, you know what to do. Hit that like and subscribe button. It sure helps the channel out a lot. And as you see, our poker pal is struggling a bit as he finally makes the hero call, holding on to king-queen offsuit. And we're off to this run out. So let this be a lesson to you. If you're all in and you see your poker pal struggling to make the call and they ask if you want to run it twice, don't be greedy like me and allow variants to steal your stack. Just play nice and run it twice. And that'll do it for this week's episode. And coming up next week, we're going to try something just a tad bit different. We're going to bring you action from one of my favorite live streams, the regular Joe Poker Show. It's going to be a fun recap of some of the action we saw while we were railing our buddies from live at the reserve. So call your friends, call your neighbors. It's going to be a blast, sort of like the hands you see over here. So until next time, play smart, play with heart, and always have fun. This is Marty, and you've been watching Reflections of a River Rat.